Welcome to the Dead Zone. Unfortunately, tonight's guest we have to reschedule. The the Dream Queen, founder of Paranormal Expeditions, had to be rescheduled. Unfortunately, she's having audio problems. And we've tried it two days in a row and it's just not working out. But we do have her rescheduled. So, you know, we are, you know, don't worry. We're going to get her back on. So, we're going to bring back an oldie but a goodie. K.D. Stafford, the mad scientist as seen on the Travel Channel. Good friend of ours, good friend of the show. Hope you enjoy it. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para-X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Oh, hell no! Whatever! The following program contains opinions expressed by the Dead Zone. If you find this broadcast offensive, <laughs> lighten up, candy ass! What? Oh my god. It's a radio show! Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Power up request received. Initiating systems. Powering up transmitters. Welcome to the dead zone. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Heal this. Hey, it's July 28th, Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. we got a great show tonight. Old friend of the show just got on a brand new series. Mr. K.D. Stafford, the mad scientist, the paranormal mad scientist. And believe me, he has some things, he builds some things that are just a little bit scary. We're going to be talking to him later on tonight about some of those uh, inventions of his. Plus, how everything's going on the brand new show, The Ghost of Morgan City. That's on the Travel Channel, but we'll be covering that later on. Paranormal News. Hey, this is Michelle again. So this week's Paranormal News and Events, I found a story on MysteriousUniverse.org. Ghost and High Strangeness at Arizona's Haunted Domes. This article was written by Brent Swanser, dated July 24th, 2019. Driving down I-8 just outside of Casa Grande, Arizona, as the desolate moonscape of this desert land rushes by you, might come across a small rural road called Thornton Road. If you take this road, you will pass through some rough desert scrub before having a very strange sight loom up ahead. There, just past a decrepit fence with the faded words, No Trespassing, etched upon it, you will see squatting out in the desert what looks like enormous alien spacecraft, otherworldly domed UFOs, looking very out of place and quite eerie. You take these to be some sort of mirage, your eyes playing tricks on you, or you think that you have stumbled upon some secret government installation, but you would be wrong. But the truth is just as weird. These are the mysterious domes of Casa Grande, which have long been the origin of all manner of tales of high strangeness, and where ghosts, evil cults, and weird portals to other dimensions are the order of the day. Although they resemble something from another world, the history of the Casa Grande domes is far from alien in nature, and they are very much of this earth. In the 1980s, a California-based computer circuitry manufacturer called Intercon Technology decided to relocate their main headquarters to a 135-acre stretch of rural, dusty, sun-parched land just outside of Casa Grande. The company went about building a complex of unique dome-like structures due to their low cost, structural integrity, and insulation qualities using a very interesting design and method of construction. 
To build the domes, a foundation was built to which was attached a sort of giant balloon that was inflated over a steel skeleton. After that, workers went inside and sprayed the interior with a durable polyurethane foam to the shape of the balloon, and added reinforcement was then put into place in the form of rebar and concrete, and the balloon was deflated, with the end result being some iconic and rather weird-looking structures that are hard to miss. Intercon would suddenly lose it all when they defaulted on a bank loan and the whole site was seized in 1983 by the Union Bank of California before it was even finished. The bizarre complex of domes and an eccentric building looking very much like a flying saucer were left abandoned to the desert, slowly rusting and crumbling away under the relentless attack of the elements. There they gathered dust and also various strange stories over the years until the domes of Casa Grande became a place of all manner of local legends and it is not hard to see why. With the unearthly looking buildings, its subterranean network of tunnels and its desolate locale, it all seems like just the sort of place to which odd tales would gravitate and they do. One of the first rumors that began spreading after the company had left and the site became basically an illegal dumping ground for garbage was that cults of robed figures were coming out here to perform arcane rituals at night. It was said that the shape of the domes and their specific location were ideal for channeling energy to power the rituals and there were even whispers that these cults were summoning demons into our world by using the domes as portals. Besides this, there have been many reports of ghosts lurking about here, possibly the victims of the various human sacrifices or the spirits of murder victims rumored to be buried here. It doesn't help that it is said that the area was once a burial ground for the ancient Anasazi tribe of the region, further adding to its spookiness and macabre allure. People visiting the domes have reported all manner of paranormal phenomena, including shadow figures, disembodied voices, and even physical attacks by unseen hands, as well as a deep sense of overwhelming foreboding and panic that sets in immediately upon stepping foot here. Electronic equipment tends to malfunction here as well, as do compasses. Some stories have said that the dark forces allegedly lurking here will slowly drive people insane, and there have even been people who have claimed to have been followed home by strange demonic apparitions. Cars parked on the road nearby are said to be besieged by tapping, knocks, or even violently rocked, and the site has in general gone on to gain a reputation for being intensely haunted and steeped in weirdness. Paranormal investigators who have visited the domes have claimed to have captured all sorts of evidence of ghostly activity, such as videos, photos, and intense EVP phenomena, wherein the voices of ghosts are caught on audio tape. It was this reputation as a deeply haunted place that brought the Casa Grande Dome's fame when the crew from the popular paranormal TV show Ghost Adventures came to investigate. During the episode, the crew claims to experience all manner of supernatural creepiness. There are unexplained noises, fleeting shadows captured on camera, and they are constantly plagued by an overwhelming sense of despair and negativity to the point that host Zach Beggins is seen to be visibly shaken and out of breath on several occasions for no reason he can fathom. Another crew member claims to experience a jolting pain in his abdomen when he tries to read out a prayer. They also capture an EVP of a voice growling demon, and the whole thing is so unsettling that Baggins ultimately proclaims this may be one of the most unusual yet sinister places we've ever investigated in America. Whether there is anything to any of this, all is up for debate, but whatever is going on here might be gone soon. The domes are rotting, collapsing in on themselves, and considering the threat their perilous footing and unstable st structures pose to the numerous curiosity seekers, paranormal investigators, vandals, and teens looking for a place to party, as of 2017, the county has ordered the whole site to be demolished, although no set timeline for this was announced. Although the site has been up for sale for years and in sometimes rented out for shoot for film shoots or 
photographers, it has mostly become nothing more than a hazardous sprawl of strange ruins and illegally dumped garbage, so it has been decided to clear it all away and let the desert have the land back. One wonders what will happen when this truly odd sight is gone, and if any of the strange phenomenon associated with it will disappear as well. So there you have it. That sounds like a really cool place to go investigate. I wish we were closer so that we could do that. If you have any plans to investigate the haunted domes in Arizona, I would say you best do it quick. And now on to upcoming events. The Spook Show Con, August 17th in DeKalb, Illinois. Looks like it's going to be a really good time. There's going to be a lot of crafts, readings, speakers, and a ghost investigation at the Egyptian Theater. For more information, go to their website, spookshowcon.com. The Horror Hound Weekend in Indianapolis, September 6th through September 8th. There's going to be a lot of celebrities there, Q&A sessions, a lot of vendors. There's going to be sections like the Mask Fest, which will have our very own Scott Blake there representing his company of Your Dream Creations. Stop in and check him out. There's going to be the Factor Fiction Fest, which is where we will be set up, a rural Indiana paranormal, Dead Zone. Please stop by and say hey. Uh, for more information, you can go to horrorhoundweekend.com. The Scarefest in Lexington, Kentucky, September 12th through the 15th. There are a lot of celebrities that go to the Scarefest. They have speakers, vendors. Uh, we will actually be one of the speakers there. We'll be doing our Bare Bones 101 for Beginners Ghost Investigations. Please stop and say hey to us. So you can check out more information on that one at thescarefest.com. Keep it smoking, boy. Smoking? Don't smoke. It causes cancer. You know what I mean. Would you just get up a spaceship or something? Colombian gold, man. Grass, hash, the weed. Dig it? God damn son of a... We have had some technical problems. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Hit it! Hit it! Hit it! 31 seconds and we're going for auto sequence start. Dead Zone WDZRDB Worldwide Your source for everything paranormal. Para X. He's born ready. He's born ready, and guess what? It's Katie Stafford from what's the name of the show, dude? What is it? What is it? Let's go. I was waiting on this guy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just having fun with you, man. And good to have you on the show. Uh, we've got Dustin Coffee in the studio with us now. That's right. I'm here. And. Scott Blake and a new friend of the show. What's your name again? Stacy. Stacy. Stacy going to be sitting there with you. I I can't remember. <laughs> I can't remember anything anymore. I never have been able to. So what's Sorry. happening, man? Uh, not a whole lot, you know. Just uh, doing my usual thing down here in the lab, putting stuff together. Putting stuff together. I just told these guys about a, a thing that you had built a while back, like a Tesla coil thing. It's like the most dangerous thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and, you, and, and you guys use that, right? Yeah, you're probably referring to the Jacob's Ladder. The, uh, Jacob's Ladder, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tesla poles are, are also pretty dangerous, but yeah. Jacob's Ladders are, yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Dangerous. That's crazy. I think we met you, how long ago was it, Dustin? Uh, a little over a year. I'm oh, sorry? Was it the infirmary? The infirmary, yeah, yeah. yeah. Randolph County in Winchester. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you had uh, you were you were I think we, you had the helmets there. Yeah, right? the crazy yeah. helmet that just it's, stuff. I can't remember what it does. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I had the, the ghost helmet. That's um, that was kind of right after uh, I, I got comfortable with the setup, and I thought it was uh, it was doing what I wanted to do or what I thought it would do, and so I decided to you know start touring it around with this and stuff. So. Yeah, that was a big thing then, and I think um, I think we had uh, 
paranormal task force. I had their helmet there too because I just made yeah. it on one. So. Yep, you sure did. Yeah. So what does it help? What, you, know, you told me that you you explained it to us time and time. We've never had him on the show before, have we? Him or Katie, right? Oh, by the way, no. hi to Katie and the yes. family. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell her hello. She's picking our, our uh, son up right now from his Nana's house. So All right. Well, our, our, <laughs> our be- doing the domestic goddess things. Right yeah, on. Our best of the right, family. Yep, yep. Okay, before we get into what you've... It's so cool that you've got this new show. Let's talk about what does that helmet do? Uh, okay, so the helmet, right? Uh, first of all, I was inspired to play with the idea. Uh, I saw, when I was a kid, uh, a study that was being done, a scientific experiment that was being done with uh, something called the God Helmet. The God Helmet, that's uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I remember it, yeah. Right, yeah, and that was uh, Dr. Michael Persinger and... Uh, uh, Stanley Corin uh, was the engineer who built the helmet, and Michael Persinger was the uh, was the neuroscientist that had the idea that uh, by targeting a specific part of your brain uh, and using a specific complex series of uh, uh, magnetic fields applied to that part of your brain, uh, that he thought that he could induce a um, a fake paranormal experience or a fake religious experience right and so they did all these experiments this in the lab you know uh, under all these control conditions inside of the faraday cage and um they had a lot of different a lot of interesting results from it <clears throat> and uh, most of the time at a minimum people would feel like there was a presence with them in the room uh-huh. so i thought it was interesting um you know, this, that he was trying to disprove paranormal activity or paranormal experiences uh, with the helmet and electromagnetic waves. Right. Um, it made me wonder, like, okay, what if what if what you're seeing is not fake? What if this is rewiring your brain to see something that's usually there, but you can't? Uh, interact with it, or you can't sense it under normal conditions that are, you know, the normal way our brain works. Well, so, that, that'd be that'd be kind of like uh, if you walk into a highly magnetic, energized. I guess I'm looking. I'm not, not going to say the right word here. Um, a strong magnetic. A, a strong med- uh, Yeah. A. Um, Oh, I, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I don't want to sound like an idiot. Just say it. I'm going to do it anyway. Unshielded ungrounded wires throughout an old house uh, give off, you know, that kind of uh, that kind of vibe, right? Am I not Similar. Right? Yeah. Similar. Uh, that's, that's a similar thing, you know, and, and that's kind of the way science has kind of explained away paranormal experiences. Is, right. Is by, and it's always, that's always the go-to response. Like, they can't figure out what you, if they can't determine, like, you know, exactly what it was that you thought you saw or you thought you experienced, then they will automatically go to the, oh, well, it's probably just, you know, a hallucination induced by uh, electromagnetic fields. And, right. you know, I, I find that interesting because, you know, I don't remember the last time I had a hallucination from <laughs> just a standard magnetic field. Right. Well, n- n- yeah, not that anyway. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I've been in some pretty serious, uh, intense magnetic fields. I mean, when you're in your car, you're. I mean, that's that's a pretty serious magnetic field that, that so many pieces of electronics and your alternator and everything's putting off in your car. Right. So, I mean, to me, that wasn't a valid explanation. Okay. Uh, so, you know, and then I saw this. Uh, I saw this documentary, and I can't even remember what the documentary was, but it was a scientist, and he he was working in his lab one night, and. Um, he said that he felt like something was there with him, and he was there on the floor alone. And he turned to his left, and he saw an apparition coming towards him, and it just kind of uh, dissipated and went through him and kept on going. And he thought it was weird, but he was a scientist, and he was like, I just saw a ghost, but it can't be a ghost. And then he said that uh, one of his uh, studies, understudies that was working in the lab a few nights later had the same experience. And so then he started looking around, trying to figure out if there was something environmental that could cause this. So then he realized that someone, or that the, uh, uh, another 
department had installed this electron something upstairs, some kind of big uh, electronic device that had put off this heavy field, right? It had a big fan on it that, that causes this heavy electromagnetic field. And he said, you know, oh, I figured it out. There you go. That's what it's causing. Yeah. <laughs> but to, that's just crazy to me because how in the world can just some random electromagnetic field off of a piece of uh, a device like a fan or something, yeah. um, electrical device. Right. I mean, well, my, my, two, people, two people have the same um, experience, you know, mm -hmm. two nights in a row, basically. <laughs> right. And, you know, I just don't buy it. So yeah. I decided to make the helmet find out myself. And, of course, I didn't have a god helmet to go off of, so I just kind of engineered it from the ground up, you know, how I, how I, I thought it. Um, right, yeah. I, I couldn't engineer anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I just, it, it amazes me though, like uh, a bad, uh, a bad uh, breaker box can cause problems with some people, evidently. I don't know. I, That's yeah, right. yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Now, there's no doubt that, that, uh, that certain, and some people are, are more, um, more open to the effects of uh, electromagnetic fields. I'm not saying that electromagnetic fields, strong fields, can't interact with you and cause you to have uh, different effects on you yeah. but it's usually it's, it's usually like a feeling of something right a, a, it's, it's a, like feeling a feeling of a feeling of dread yeah. or or something that you're not alone that kind of thing or just anxiety well, most of the time it's like a, well, most of the, it's like a panic it's like yeah a, anxiety exactly the fear cage right, right? like everybody at the point to the fear cage and say well this is probably what's inducing you know feelings of fear or dread or whatever like panic attack or something and that that's you know that's that's possible. And I think there's been there's been studies done on it, and it is it does cause people to experience stress in some situations. Some right. people, right. but that there's a stark difference there between a general feeling of dread and panic and seeing an apparition. Right. You know, I mean, it's one thing to be to have the way our our mental you know process is affected and make us think differently but but to, but to inject a visual or auditory hallucination i mean that's kind of pinpoint stuff right our brain does that yeah. well do you yeah do yeah. you think that like um maybe it could be the um, power of suggestion maybe um somebody explains to them to to you the experience they had while um being exposed to emf and then when you get exposed to the same, the same kind of setup, um, you have the same kind of reaction to it. Right, I see what you're saying. Um, oh, like you're um, pre, like uh, positioning yourself to believe something already. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well, of course, then that that's something that always has to be taken into account. You know, like uh, even with it's just your like going ghost hunting or whatever it is, location is like a popular location. Like, everything you see and hear about this location is, whether you like it or not, or, or whether you try to block it out or not, you've been influenced by all this information already, so... Subliminal. You yeah. Try to, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but that's, that's the case most of the time, but not always. But you know, anything that you're exposed to beforehand obviously can cause... Um, uh, you to kind of be suggested to lean in that direction but you know like with uh with my helmet and and some of the experiments i've done i've noticed i mean it's not it's not that you, you get a lot of just things that you wouldn't expect you know like i would expect now i have gotten a lot of times people feel a presence in the room but i would expect them um you know maybe to see something similar every time and it, it wouldn't it matter what location you were at right but it seems to me that uh, I've had a lot of the experiments done by uh, some of my uh, friends in the field that I've uh, made helmets for, and they've done several, I mean, probably over a dozen investigations at Ashmore State since yeah. they got their helmets, and, um, you know, several people have worn the helmet at those locations. Now, you, you, you do more than helmets, too. I mean, you do, like, ghost boxes. I know a, a very good friend of ours, oh, yeah. a good, good friend yeah. of the show, Cheryl, you know, Cheryl Carter, right? Mm -hmm. Cheryl and Carter. I mean, she just 
displayed a box that you had made for her at uh, Mid South this year, right? Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I, I did. I made that. I actually made that box for her. Mm-hmm. And gave it to her. She bought that box from me at the the uh, not the last uh, Mid South, but the one before that. Right. Well, and, we just we just, uh, we just saw her. Um, she was right next to us this uh, this year. Mm-hmm. Wish wish you could have been there, awesome. buddy. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Um, I don't know what it was. It was, it was really cool. Oh well, yeah, you've been you've been busy a little. Yeah, it's okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I just wanted you know. Yeah, you do a lot more than than uh, these oh, helmets yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The helmets just kind of like um, everybody likes it. You know, everybody either likes it or they hate it. They want to. They want to. They want to talk about it. You know, it's cool with me. Either way, I mean. It's, I, I, another thing, another thing that's cool that you didn't mention is uh, these helmets, or at least the one that I saw that we saw, right? Uh, yeah. Um, they have LED lights that. Uh, right. That, yeah. I mean. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's something that's a little that sets it apart from just the, the the older God helmet. Also, I mean, besides the fact that it doesn't work the same at all. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a magnet. All right. right yeah. Head, well, there you go. It's completely Upgrade. different as far as the mechanism goes, and yeah, the LEDs. LEDs is a whole other uh, addition to it. It's called brain entrainment. And, uh, I mean, there's science behind all this stuff, right? Yeah. And, um, so brain entrainment basically says that you can, um, it's possible to sync your brain waves with uh, whatever frequency that uh, flash into your eyes for a certain period of time. Cool. Now, did not, did that, did Chris... Mm-hmm. Chris Booth not used that a couple of years ago, or, or I, I, I don't know. I can't remember. I, don't know. I, I, I know we were there. We were yeah, there he, with you. He's had his helmet on so many different people. He doesn't remember. <laughs> he doesn't know. Okay. But, but, I mean, Chris, Chris, who now? Chris Booth. Chris oh Chris. no, yeah, no, yeah. he doesn't use it. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, we, no, had, no. Um, we had, we uh, had. Uh, her name is. Uh, hold on, who did we have wear that? I can't remember. I can't remember who wore it. Right. Welcome, yeah, to, yeah. welcome to welcome to me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah, I'm gonna find out. But anyway, yeah, we had her. We had her wear the helmet in uh, the basement at the infirmary. Yes. And right yeah, there, yeah. Yeah. That was that was an awesome experience. I mean, she. We had her wear it in a specific room, right? Because we knew that. Oh, it was Jessica. Jessica Potter. Yeah. yeah Jessica. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember who wore it for a minute because yeah, there were a few people, but um, so. We we chose this one room specifically because that that was the room where the lady had supposedly hung herself, right? Right. Oh yeah. yeah. We got a, we got yeah. a really good EVP there. Yep. Oh yeah. 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 So all oh, I mean it was crazy. I mean it, I was like, okay, well I'm gonna position her chair like in this direction because the lady supposedly hung herself right here, right? So she would have been hanging right here. Right. So I positioned Jessica exactly facing that direction. And she didn't know anything about any of this beforehand. Yeah. And um, so I put the helmet on her and everything, and I was standing there. And, I mean, she didn't even need to be left alone for a period of time or anything to start getting stuff with the helmet. And next thing you know, she's seen a, somebody, a, like a human figure, like she said it looked like it was uh, levitating or elevated in front of her. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was amazing. And that, just as she was saying that, um, uh, Chris Booth come around behind me, and he had the uh, SLS camera. Uh-huh. And he starts mapping a figure right there in that spot. Right. When she's talking about it. That's but very that's cool. That's right. I, I think he, uh, post, he, he posted that, didn't he? A video of that? I don't think, I don't think so. I haven't, I haven't seen anything. I know, he, I, I, know I, I had seen one a while back uh, from uh, Randolph with... Someone using that that equipment. Unfortunately, we don't have that. I wish we could. It's just too much for us. We're, you know, we're cheap old country people. <coughs> yeah, I wish I had that. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it was cool stuff. Unfortunately, I don't have the footage myself. So. Right. Yeah. We have flashlights. We have flashlights. <laughs> yeah, well, we do have flashlights, and they're and on it. our cell phones, but we have them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, it's cool. Hey. Uh, Cell phone has become a very popular paranormal. And don't device. get don't get me started on that because you know what I hate that. that. Oh my god! What's your take on that, KD? Wait a minute! Wait wait wait! Let's let's, let's give him a minute. We're gonna take a break here just for a minute, okay. and we'll come right back. Okay. All right. All right. Hello, this is Christopher Saint Booth, and you're listening to the Dead Zone.
all radio stations in town were palm trees, we'd be the one with the biggest coconuts. Now. Here are the one, the only. Dead okay, we're back. So. KD, yeah. the mad scientist. How would you like to say a word? Mad yeah. scientist. Love it. Hey, KD, this is Scott. Hey. Finally, the man hey, speaks up? up. I haven't had a chance to get a word in, so. <laughs> Well, now's your chance. What's up, man? Now's my, now's my chance. And, well, I was just telling these guys, like, I'm listening to you talk, and I'm like, I can't follow. I, I, I'm, like, trying to catch up and listen to everything. And, and by the time I'm, like, coming up with, like, working up this question or whatever, you're totally onto something else. And I'm, like, totally lost. But I got to say, I really, I, I really like the choice of helmet you chose to, to put your, your, your work on. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, it's yeah. it's much better than a regular like bike helmet or something. It was a transformer, right? No, yeah, you know, well, because I, I tried I tried a motorcycle helmet because obviously that's that's the, that's what the original thing was. And my original attempt was to recreate what he did. But you know, the bike helmet is not adjustable. You can't. You know, everybody's head's not the same, right? So right. how do you? <laughs> you know, the magnets have to be over specific part of Nothing fits my head. <laughs> no. Your head. No, it fits your head, trust me. It fits nothing, my nothing, head. no, like, nothing fits my head. That's what I went off of. My head is like the biggest head that I know of anybody that I know. So, <laughs> oh, well, hey, wait, next, t- next time problem. we meet, hey, are you going to be at Horror Hound? Let's try that out. Let's, uh, let's find out. <laughs> we, will, we will have a head measuring. Yes, <laughs> we need to, yeah. Because we, we all probably fit in the same category of uh, not in one size fits most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it doesn't I'm work always, for when I'm at Liz, I'm like, do you, do you guys have like an extra, extra large, perhaps, maybe? <laughs> and they, their kids are like, no, sir, this will fit you. Listen, I've been <laughs> yeah. here, I've tried this. Yeah, yeah, it fits just, just, it's just enough where it feels good when you put it on, but the, by the time you get down the road, you have, you have a headache. <laughs> <laughs> Pass out with lack of blood in your yeah, skull. Right, yeah. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, that can also make you hallucinate, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do a lot of things that can make us hallucinate. So, so I, no. <laughs> I was looking around, and I, I, I was in a yard sale or something, and I just happened upon this, this Transformers voice changer helmet, right? And I pick it up, and I look, because I'm a Transformers fan, first and foremost, has a giant um, Decepticon tattoo on my arm. Nice. So, um, yeah, very cool, yeah. So I'm looking at the helmet, uh, uh-huh. and I'm looking at all the straps and the bands on the inside, and it's it's made basically so you can move it up, down, forward, back. I mean, it's, it's it was perfect, you know. So I was like, well, you know, it looks cool. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but I so I just cut the face out of it, and um, yeah, and I painted it up, and that that's that, that's pretty much it's hasn't changed since then. <laughs> I've actually used the same one a few other times for a couple other builds. I'm actually working on my own helmet right now. Um, I'm going to 3D print it. I just have to finish designing it and everything. Uh, it's hard to actually, I'm finding that it's really hard to actually make your own helmet. It's better than the one that I'm using right now. So. <laughs> All right. I'm, well, I'm sure you can figure it out because your initial goal was to make the God's helmet and you've yeah improved and not only that but you made it adjustable and man you're just you're for the consumer aren't you well i'm looking at at different people using it using it in different places sure you know and, and you know the, the yellow moped helmets is kind of silly <laughs> well, well you know um i don't know if you do know i'm a special effects artist i've made helmets in the past so oh, cool. If you if you have one three D printed, I can make a mold for you and, and produce copies. There you go. Yeah, the resin, the resin. Cap. There you yeah. go. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Yeah, that's what that's actually what I want to do. But I just, you know, for me to start doing that from nothing, it, it takes a lot of work. I do that all the time. He's man. right I, here, I, man. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'd rather have some of my experience do it. So yeah, I'll definitely uh, be hollering at you as soon as I get that that model made. Yeah, cool. do it. You do, do you do the roto casting? Is that what you do? Right, yeah. Yeah, that's cool, man. Yeah, I, I've looked into it, but, you know, I have to watch. Every time I take on a new idea or device that I want to build, I have to completely learn, like, a whole new subject or five subjects from the ground up. Sure. And What's wrong with that? Know, roto, roto What's wrong with that, right? Red, yeah. Roto He's a busy red man. Molds, this is like, yeah, it's not at the top of my list. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's 
that's one I'll, I will gladly <laughs> outsource out to a friend. So, yeah, definitely. All right. Well, you know where to find me. Very so, cool. Man. Awesome. So, on top of this kick ass helmet you've designed, now, and if I remember correctly, when we hooked up in uh, at Randolph County, you were you had a pretty good list of um, well known psychics and investigators that have used this at different locations and whatnot. So aside from that, you have a bunch of other kick ass stuff that's going on. Oh yeah, a bunch of oh, kick ass yeah. stuff. <laughs> we do a lot, we do a lot of stuff. We um, you know the ghost boxes. Um, my my friend and teammate Doug Pimblot, he um he's another ghost box genius. And uh, he, he's actually, in, in my book, he's the genius on, on ghost boxes. As far as, like, um, historical, what we know, like, Frank's box type ghost boxes and stuff, he's, he's an electronic expert. So uh, between me and him, we're, we're, we've got a lot of cool stuff coming out. Um, I'm also working on uh, some new boxes that I'll be putting out pretty soon. Um, I have one that I'm going to call the Legba box. And... I chose Legbo because of uh, the uh, voodoo uh, Papa Legbo. Uh, yeah. Papa, Le- Papa Legbo, yeah. right? Yeah. He's like the the uh, he's the uh, intermediate between the living and the underworld. So I think you, you know made if, a you want, if you want to talk to right? you have to do <laughs> Papa Legbo. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, but uh, yeah, with the ghost boxes and uh, you know we're working on some visual stuff. Uh, uses a connect cam but it's not your standard uh sls um which we do make those too um well that's, we, we make our own version of a sls it's not an sls but sls is just a connect camera on <laughs> that one anyway so um yeah yeah we're, we're doing a lot of cool stuff man um yeah i got i guess there's potentially another project i might be working on out in the desert coming up so Ooh. what that might be what? Yeah. I can't really say anything else. What? What are you telling me? Right. Are you kidding me? We're gonna we're 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 gonna go ahead and talk about. Are you kidding me, dude? You got another one coming up. You just got on. I, I, I you just that. got. <laughs> it's, it's maybe it's a maybe thing right now. I don't know. <laughs> so you just got on the, the brand new show. Everyone, everyone knows. It. Everyone loves it. Ghost I, of. Glad you know, um, we we knew we knew it was, it was gonna be good, but uh, what is it? We knew it was gonna be great. What's the name of it? Then actually, what's the name of it? I forgot. Ghost of what? I'm kidding you. Ghost dude. of Morgan. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Yeah. Ghost of Morgan. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was super cool that um, that they wanted me to be a part of it, and you know, it was, a, it was definitely an honor to get to work with Sarah, Ben, and Jeremy, and you know, all the producers and. The whole crew, everybody was great. Just all around a great experience. I really don't have any bad stories to tell about the whole thing at all. Well, we're done then. Forget it. We're done. No, Good to I'm talk kidding. With I'm you. kidding. No, no, no. We're here for the dirt. Yeah. Anyway, no, really. How how cool was that, man? G- give us a little bit of insight on on that kind of thing, man. How cool was that for you? Uh, was, uh, well, he just you know, said it was great. In Louisiana. <laughs> I lived there for like three years and uh, Fort Polk. Uh, when I was in the army. Oh, and, uh, I went to uh, boot camp there. Oh, really? I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry too. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. no, I, I, I don't want you to. I don't want you to talk anymore about. You know, if you don't want to, just how cool was that of an experience for you? Oh, yeah, I mean, it, was, it, was a, it was a great experience. I mean, uh, it was it was basically sort of a dream come true, like a bucket list type thing, like a something if I do this this list of things I'll be happy when I die right so that was one of my that was on my list of things so uh, if I never get to be in another show again or I, you know whatever I'm, I'll be completely <laughs> satisfied with my experience there on Ghost of Morgan City because are you telling me, me are you telling me that the season's over no there's uh, like three more episodes oh yeah, yeah I'm gonna call bullcrap bullcrap I'm gonna call bullcrap yeah, okay. you just said if if Basic, basically, you're saying if if nothing else came up, you would still be satisfied. <laughs> no way. Like, as no. The TV thing goes, you know, as far as like being really? on TV. Yeah, I mean, I would be happy okay. with like not not doing paranormal stuff anymore. But you know, I, of what? course, I would love to keep doing TV. 
you know, other shows, that show, whatever. But, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm just glad that I got to do something that a lot of people don't get to do ever. So yeah, that's at least I got to do it that one time. So, you know. <laughs> I'm, over, I'm over here like, no. No, because I mean, how, 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 how far in the show are that we? I'm not going to pursue my interest in, in, uh, <laughs> in, in the things that, that I do on TV. But yeah, sure. I loved it, you know, and uh, um, yeah, and all the experiences, it's like we, we got some of the best evidence, man. And it's like, you know, well, that's very cool. And, and especially, it was like everything lined up, like the, the universe lined up, stars lined up, I don't know, whatever. And like, you know, everything, like you have an investigation and it, you, you know as well as I do, like you do an investigation, it's like nothing happens, right? Yep, you're well, damn right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't yeah. Never get I don't know if it's the combination of us, like as a team or, or like uh, just the whole, the whole, um, uh, formula in general but i think sarah has probably drove a lot of uh our activity kicking off you know like it did uh she's kind of a super medium so i mean it, you medium. know I'm, cool. i've always been highly skeptical of not not uh psychic ability but uh people who claim to have psychic ability sure yeah me too and, and uh have yeah, you, have you yeah. heard the show <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think I think so. And so yeah. uh, I, I know we can relate. And uh, but but you know when you when you meet somebody that is clearly, obviously, and, and then they, and, you know, I have a test. Right. So, right. Of course, I tested her, and, and she passed, and I was I was shocked because I've actually never had anybody pass my test. So well, um, very cool. Sarah Sarah Lim, uh, Sarah Lim has passed my test, so she's. She's gold, in, in my opinion. Sweet. And uh, and Ben, I mean, it's you know, I watched Ben for years on uh, TV on Factor Fiction. That was like my favorite paranormal show. Factor Fiction, yeah, I love that. Yeah, I love that show. I love the whole idea. I still it. watch it. Yeah, it's still on reruns, man. Yeah, no, yeah, no, I got a DVR, man. I got all my <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I was telling Ben when when I was down, I was like, dude, you got to go back and do do another season of Factor Fiction. But, um, yeah, so, you know, to, to get to work with Ben and get to meet Ben was awesome. Because, um, like I said, I've been uh, kind of watching what he did for years. And I even kind of uh, mirrored the way he worked on Factor Fake with right. some of, a lot of my investigations. So, um, he was definitely an influence on my uh, direction I've been going in. And Jeremy, Jeremy's, man, that guy... He knows so much stuff. I, like, and he he won't he won't sit there and just like bombard you with it either. He's not one of those guys that's, like just gonna start talking to you. Like, this guy gets shut up like me. Um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, Jer Jeremy, like, he won't say nothing until you. But when you ask him about a topic, he will shock the hell out of you by <laughs> knowledge on, uh, you know, paranormal stuff. So, right. you know, Jeremy, he's he's awesome, man, and and he knows Louisiana. He knows, knows the I love that place, man. I, I love New Orleans. Me too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I love it too. I, love, I just love it. It's like a different feeling when you get down yeah. there. Yeah. I, moved, I moved to, Indi uh, I'm sorry, Illinois back in the 80s and then over to Indiana. But back in the 80s, back in my high school days and a couple of years after that, I spent all my time down in, in uh, Louisiana in the swamp, dude. I love it. I can't, I can't get enough of it. You weren't chasing gators, were you? Did you ever uh, see the old skunk cave down there? Uh, on the island, man. Yeah. We just went. We just went down there a few years ago, man. And Michelle and I. That's awesome. That's great. It's wonderful. I need to get yep. down there, but I need to get down there when it's not 154 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> yeah, I like it. right. But right. when, when the love bugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know all about the love bugs, man. Yeah. Oh, man, everybody, everybody up here is like. Oh man, I love this hot weather. And I'm like, whatever. Bring the yeah. snow. Yeah, I. Well, yeah. <laughs> I just want. I just I'm want fall. October, the first of October, because right. it snows at the end of October. Well, a little, a, a little light. Or you get sunburned. One of the two. Yeah. It's Indiana. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Louisiana in the winter time, and, and that's about it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you can't see out the windows in the spring. I mean, because the windows <laughs> are like. 
It's when it, when it gets that humid out, like... They fog up, you can't see... <laughs> I, I'm sorry. But yeah, um, Louisiana's great. So, you know, it's cool to get to go down there, get to visit again. And, uh, and as Morgan City, like, everybody in Morgan City was just so... I, I, obviously, there's going to be people who disagree, but I, yeah. I, everybody I met in Morgan City was were super nice. And, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. It's just a really cool place, I thought. And, um, Southern folks and are the greatest people in the world, man. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, there you go. <laughs> so, Katie, I got a question for you, man. Yeah. It's a hot one. Where is your bucket list investigation going to take place? Bucket list investigation. What, what like, the one place that I, I, I had to investigate before I die? Yeah, the one place you've been dreaming about investigating. Oh, God. I mean, obviously, well, there's one, there's one place that I have always wanted to go, and, uh, you know, Zach Bagans kind of beat me to it. Damn. Imagine that, right? Of course. Yeah. I've been, I've been full of like, demons. Super yeah. Cool, super cool that he got to do it. And, you know, Zach, Zach you know, he's he's on top of it. So he knows what he's doing. But um, that's, that's one place I would still like to go before I die. Uh, I can't think of, you know, like as far as like ghost hunting and, and top places to go, Europe is usually my where my brain goes to automatically. Somewhere in Europe or... or uh, Scotland. You know, somewhere with it. Scotland. Somewhere with it. Yes. Scotland. Scotland. Yeah. Scotland yeah. would be a great one. Yeah, great friend, great friend of the show, man. Hollywood ghost hunter. Yeah. Goes there oh, yeah. all the time. Oh, yeah. You should hook yeah. up with him, man. <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, ghost hunting teams and stuff, paranormal teams in Scotland, too. I was kind of surprised because, you know, a lot of the volume of people that friend requests I was getting from Scotland. And uh, they were all paranormal related, you know. Right. And it's pretty interesting, but yeah, I mean, I, when I thought about, it, I was like, yeah, well, I guess you know, <laughs> it's an old play. There's been a lot of stuff going on there, so it made sense. Uh, but at the same time, you think that it's almost like second nature to them, because because they're so they grew up they grew up there, you know. For somebody from South Carolina, Scotland seems like a really cool place. Everybody's I mean, probably different when you when you live there, but sure. Yeah. Well, grass, uh, is, yeah, but grass, grass, grass is, is always castle. greener, dude. You oh, never know. Castle. You know why the grass is always greener on the other side? Right. Yeah. Because we're not over there stepping on it. <laughs> you're right. You're right. That was good. I love that. That was a good one. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Dracula's Castle, that's a good answer. I love yeah. that. That's, I'd love to go there as well. Yeah. Yeah, Dragon's Castle is just like, you know, because it's like one of the, it's got to be the story that has blew up the most and out of out of an actual uh, historical account, you know. That, yeah. I mean, there's actual, you can go back and slap the impeller with the dude, you know. <laughs> he was a real dude. <laughs> was real, real things that he did, right? And, it, it so, just, like, you know, all this is real. It's not just, like, legends and this, that, and the other. Right. I mean, yeah. If, if you could, you could literally just investigate all of the the historical stuff about uh, Dracula's castle and just completely omit any kind of legend, anything. You still have plenty to do. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, my problem is I'm never satisfied with like one night investigation. I like to like thoroughly get into a place, you know. Sure. So, have you? I have to do like a month there or something. Have you seen the? A month. He said, yeah, man. yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Damn it. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, Mark that again. Gonna, Son of a bitch. Something's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to you tomorrow. Absolutely. Have you seen the uh, meme I mean, on um, on Vlad the Impaler? It's, um, it's um, the reigning yard decoration champion for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was cool. Yeah. Awesome. I did not see that. Yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's awesome. Do they still give away, like, do this, like, thing where you can win uh, a, a trip, trip a there trip, to yeah. sleep in these coffins yeah. in the in the I, castle. I, I think they do. I think you do. I think uh, like a Leonard Pickle, you know, post. I don't know, but I'm going to look for that now. That you said <laughs> I, I think they do. I think I think you can actually do that. It's, it's not cheap, but I think you can actually do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what I, I need somebody to fund my trip. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, we all, we all know, did. <laughs> anybody yeah, anybody yeah. who wants to give me money to go to Dracula's castle, feel free. You know, yeah. And, 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 and you'll let them wear the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. You'll let them wear the helmet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, I'll, give them a, I'll give them a, a shout out and everything on the, on the video. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're going to have to raise a lot of money because I think all of us from Dead Zone get to go as well, right? Yep, yep. <laughs> take oh, yeah. it, take yeah, us with you, man. We'll, we'll, we'll make it happen. Take us with you. Right. Well, whatever. He said it here, so that's where it, you know, that's how it goes. <laughs> All right, but hey, hey, we're out of time, man. Um, and we so good, have him back on. so good to talk to you again. Well, yeah. not again, but for the first time on the show. Well, we talk to you right, all the yeah. time. Yeah, and, um, uh, you know, I, we, there's so much to talk about. Yeah. Me on again, and I'll explain the helmet in a little bit more detail. Absolutely. But first, tell everyone where they can find your website, where they can buy your equipment, and where they can find your new show. Uh, Supernatural Inc. with a C dot org uh, is our website. And basically, that's just your link to our Facebook page and right. social media pages because that's how we do most of our stuff. But uh, on Facebook, you can find... Uh, Supernatural Inc. page at Supernatural I N K. Very um, cool. And um, I'm on Instagram is Supernatural Inc. Um, yeah, we have a YouTube channel. Um, it's it's kind of it's suffering, but it, you know I'm trying to do something with it. But I think that's actually under. Uh, it takes it time. takes a while, man. It takes a long time to get some kind of recognition. Yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah, love it. Yeah, just just tell where it was at. Paranormal Mad Scientist for the uh, YouTube channel, and yeah, that's that's pretty much me. And then uh, then you got Friday night, of course, because Morning City on Travel Channel eight nine Central. Awesome. There's that. Uh, and this Sunday so, you can uh, find him on Dead Zone. <laughs> and this Sunday he'll be on the Dead Zone. Yeah, I mean it's eight o'clock Eastern time. I don't think telling people what time the show starts. <laughs> 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 <It's gonna laughs> right. Too late. It Damn it. Right. Oh. Yeah. You did it again. You damn. Can't say damn. Always. Again. <laughs> no, damn school. Yeah. Damn you to hell. Whatever. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, thank you, man. We appreciate you coming on, and we're going to have you back on again if that's okay. Oh, yeah. I'd love to, man. It's fun. Yeah. I love talking to you guys. All right. Awesome. Now. Sorry Every for time the... I go to a con, I'm like, where's, where's Lee at? Where's Lee and Dustin at? And, well, <laughs> we're here, man. We're, we are. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I appreciate you, and tell Katie and the family we... Look forward to seeing them again. Very soon. Uh, we'll do that. Very soon. All right. And from, and I, you guys want to say anything? Bye, Katie. <laughs> Bye, Katie. Bye. Good All to right. talk yeah, to man. you. All right. Good to talk to you, too. All right. I'll talk to you all again. All right. Okay. This is the Dead Zone Paranormal Radio Show. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.